Baby, come back. Why'd you shoot your load on me? Are you ready, Mark? It's been like, five, we're like five minutes, six minutes late already. Shut up. Baby, come back. Why Mark. don't you shoot your load on me? Come on my back. My back is itchy, man. When you guys, <laughs> when you guys scratch my back. I'll scratch your back, you scratch my back. Uh, fuck. The vape team experiments with one another. It's called teamwork. Oh, will you start the show already? All right, let's do it. Oh, wow. Ignition, Mark, shut up. That's me. Mike, shut up. Thank you. Episode 107 of The Vape Team. What is up, everybody? Thursday night once again. And with me, as always, the man with the master plan, Mr. Hit That Juiced, the iconic legend, Mount Olympus himself, the Iron Lung, Mikey motherfucking vapes. Como esta, bien? And Gracias, usted. a man that doesn't deserve an introduction... <laughs> Mr. Fucking Winter Ham, Flash, Mr. Flashy, Flashy. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Flatulent Fagan. Flatulent Fagan. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being once again our honored, honored guest. Thank you. Thank you. I thought it was junior guest member. Junior member, honored guest. Okay. Thanks. Thank you, Mike, for clarifying that. You're welcome. <laughs> he's he's had his ups and downs that Mark character, but yeah, it's Thursday night. My work week is finished, so I feel good as fuck. Mike, you're home from six hours of traffic and you're drinking <sighs> vodka out of the bottle. What, give us a rundown of your day. Oh God, my day. Anyway, I left uh, around two o'clock to go for a half hour drive. And basically, that half hour drive going, another half hour drive coming would have been an hour, another half hour of bullshitting to do what I had to do. So an hour and a half took six hours because of traffic going and coming. On the long New Yorkers, you guys know the LIE, right? Long Island Expressway, the largest parking lot in the world. Yeah, four accidents going, two accidents coming back. Nightmare. So anyway, yeah. You, you need to get a hit that shit helicopter. <laughs> and then those, you know, six hours that I basically wasted. Oh, actually, I wasted like four hours. I was supposed to get ready for the event tomorrow. Ugh. And uh, I just finished 10 minutes ago getting everything ready. Well, at least you did it. At least everything came together. Well, now I got to get me ready. You look good, man. You everything come... I got to bring, I got to pack. I haven't done anything. It's all. But salute. So I wish I had a drink right now. I'll save it for this weekend. Save it for tomorrow night. Some cranberry vodkas, baby. Oh, I could taste it. Well, the good news about that is that I have this charged, and I'm ready to get some serious fucking TVC Mike Vapes room sharing footage going. Um, oh my also... god! I totally forgot we're sharing a room. Oh yeah. Ooh. This week already started off fucked up. It's going to end. Yes, it is. Dude, I'm going to snuggle up. you back to the center that you deserve. I'm fucking out of here. You're going to be snuggled. Bring your, headphones. Bring your headphones. I'm going to hold him like a fucking child that needs love. Yeah, you guys, oh, shut the fuck God. up the day you walk in the door. <laughs> Holy fucking forgot we're sharing a room. It's going to be it's going to make me look so bad if Mark if Mike leaves like Mark did. <laughs> that would be funny. <laughs> I already told you, dude. Uh, if you're loud and you're snoring, 
you forget something, your your fucking Darth Darth Vader machine, whatever. It is. <laughs> Dude, hallway. You're going straight in the hallway, or you're going to go to Phenom's room. You guys can go fucking snort together. I need some empathy, Mike, because I have abandonment issues after the Atlanta debacle of of Mark pulling out before we finished. Uh, we got an alert. Uh, Michael Portelli, he's getting blowjob again during the show. I love when he does that. Yep. At least somebody's getting blowjobs around here. That's all I'm saying. Hell yeah. So anyway, why don't we start off tonight's show by talking about what we're vaping. Uh, we'll start with the underwhelming Vapen Fagan with his buffet this evening. Ooh, um, the cuboid tap with the reload RTA. Uh, banana bondage in there. Got this little smoke stick. I think it's the AIO stick. Also, it's some BB in there. The Captain. Um, hold on. Nova RDA. There we go. Um, got jelly in there. Don't laugh when I show you this, but yes, I am vaping on it. The Kanger 5.6 uh, with the big old tank inside there. I have some hazy custard. Got a lot of the door e-liquid tonight. And then last up, I got the Smoke O-Sub 80 with the little beast tank. And inside there, I actually, actually I have no idea what's inside there. Other than that, that's it. Pretty boring tonight. Let's take it away, Brian. <laughs> I love when you talk to me like that. Stop looking at your phone. I'm not looking at my phone. I'm adjusting the fucking wattage on this mod, for Christ's sake. Stop it. <laughs> I don't need to hear any lip out of you. If I need that, I'll ask you to spread your legs. Woo-hoo! Right. So it's for me this evening. I have a bountiful buffet set up, and um, yeah, I'm gonna start with a little bit of the Icon RDA sitting on top of this beautiful iJoy 2700 mechanical mod. Um, I don't even know what it's called. I know my, uh, Mark just said the name of it. It's the 270. It's the 270. There you go. <laughs> And it says the best things on the side. I don't get that. What is that about? The best things are big. Mine says think different. The best things are big, thick, and black, I guess. Yours says something different, Mike? Well, I'm using the, the Gay Pride one. <laughs> I love the Gay Pride edition. Gay Pride edition. <laughs> Celebrate your diversity, Mike. Celebrate oh, yeah. It. Yeah. And in that, I am vaping on a little bit of uh, banana bondage from AdoreElicwood.com. A little banana bondage. And... Um, what else am I vaping on tonight? I'm also vaping, and maybe we'll talk about this a little bit. Uh, I'm also vaping on, <laughs> this is the fire engine edition of the uh, tap. It, it looks like a fucking, it looks like a WWF wrestling t-shirt or something. <laughs> <laughs> what was that wrestler, man, that wore that? I know. Bam Bam Bigelow. Yes, Bam Bam Bigelow, yeah. Yeah. This is the Bam Bam Bigelow edition of the tap. It's, and... like, it's like ketchup and mustard. Yeah, there's a lot of fucking shit going on here. Anyway, we'll talk about that tonight on the show. What else am I vaping on? I got a little S Modus. Uh, this is the S Modus Reborn. This is the orange edition of the Reborn with the, uh, what is that? The Reload RTA on there. This is version one Reload RTA. On the 2700 Boxer, I have Reload RTA number two in black. And last but certainly not least, I have the Sibone on the uh, with the gold edition of the Reload RTA. So I'm rocking three Reload RTAs. We'll talk about that when we talk about wicking tonight. Uh, I'm also vaping on some Jam Monster. I'd like to give a shout out to my boy Joe from Greatest Vapes. He hooked me up with this bottle because he said I'd really like it. And I'll, I, I do like it. I think it's really good. Some RoyalVapeProducts.com. A little bit of this. Royal from Joe Turner, brother of Tina. And uh, that's it. I, I told, oh, aye, aye, Captain. A little uh, prototype testing going on of something coming soon. Here we go. And uh, yeah. What, little, the Captain? Little Captain. Yeah, I'm testing the Captain prototype, even <laughs> though it's on the market already. <laughs> so, yeah, that's it, guys. Uh, Michael Vapes, I'd love to hear what you're vaping on tonight. Uh, Rainbow Bright Mechanical Mod with uh, Icon RDA. 
And there I'm vaping on some Chuck Clouds, the truth. The truth, Mofo. The truth. Uh, vaping on the captain with the goon. And there I have some overtime, I can't remember the name, vacation day. Some overtime vacation day. Uh, I'm vaping on the smoke midget mod with the baby beast. And there I have some Mama Sound ASAP. Mama uh, I just the next gen. And there I'm vaping on some RKOI coil spill. Mm. Yeah. Uh, boxer with the reload. And here I have some. <laughs> Is that a vape bumper on there? On where? On the reload? Nah, bro. That's the black and gold mixed together. Oh, that's hot. Oh, yeah. Mm. And there's... So you can see how it looks the other way around. Nice. I was actually thinking about doing the black and silver and putting it... Uh, uh... Anyway, go ahead. Thanks. Yeah. With some Raz Roulette in that reload RTA. Uh, and for the finale, engine, alien. And in there, I have some Joe motherfucking Turner raspberry custard. Joe Turner. That, that's it. That's it. Yeah. And now a word from our sponsor, Penguin. Eat, eat. <laughs> Mark, your pronunciation is getting so much better. Thank you. You can really communicate with them now, can't you? I sure can. Dude, I was at work today, and there was a guy that I was seeing, and he was telling oh. me that he was, <laughs> yeah, that's what I do. I see guys at my job. But he was telling me that his neighbor plays music, and he was singing the song, and I shit you not. There was no fucking music. He was having like, a, it's called a phantom auditory experience where you actually hear shit. It's not like a mental illness, but you actually hear sounds or it could be music. It could be anything. And uh, you literally hear it like it's legit. <laughs> Are you serious? And he was telling me, he's like, and he, dude, he knocks on her door and tells her to turn this stuff down. <laughs> <laughs> he's like 92. Turn that shit I've I've been experiencing that. Have you? What have you been hearing, Mike? Hit that shit all the time. It's like always turning around. Yeah. Weird. Yeah. I think it's in my head. Anyway. I've been having a lot of wet dreams lately. Have you really? Yeah. I gotta like stop myself. How well you, you gotta stop watching the breastfeeding videos, man. I think that's what it is. Yeah, breastfeeding's kinda hot. I'm getting carried away. I'm getting carried away. So my dad was watching the show last week, and he mentioned on Monday when I was having lunch with him, he's like, do you have to curse so much on that show? <laughs> and uh, I said, Dad, we're just chilling. I don't know. I, I can't help myself. And uh, he said, yeah, but you started, he's like, you started off the show saying, tonight we're going to focus on guns, m money, and pussy. <laughs> <laughs> and he said he was kind of fucked up about it. Uh... So anyway, yeah, welcome to the Vape Team, everybody. Thursday night, it feels good to be back as always. Tonight, we're going to talk about something that's important to all of us. <laughs> okay, so we need to pause the show. I just brought up the uh, I just brought up the intro screen. Should we watch the intro again, Mike? <laughs> oh man, dude, why do I smell it? I'm gassy today. I'm sorry. Oh jeez. Anyway, tonight we're going to talk about cotton. And actually, not just cotton. We're going to talk about wicking in general. So what I did was just to spark the creativity, to spark the discussion. I, <laughs> I, I love you, Mark. I can't believe you. You son of a bitch. I can't even focus now. All I hear is that perfect, perfectly timed fucking... Uh, it's like an action-adventure in your hiney. <laughs> anyway... I've been so, eating a lot of fruit lately. Go ahead. I'll share you guys with what I'm showing on screen. So the first picture we're looking at, let's get a little more intimate, is Japanese cotton. This is Japanese cotton, ladies and gentlemen. This is one of the wicking op uh, options that we have at our disposal. Dun, 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 dun. In the next scene, we have silica and echo wool. Silica and echo wool. Do people still use that? 
I'm gonna we're gonna talk about it. We're gonna inform the uninformed. We're gonna be corrected by people that like to make things right when we make incorrect statements. Uh, stainless steel mesh is the next wicking material. Uh, we also have a little bit of the, and I've never used this before. This is authentic hemp fiber uh, wick. So hemp fiber wick. Uh, then we have our Japanese organic cotton, which we showed earlier. And then you have sayu cotton, rayon, sayu cotton. And uh, we'll talk about that a little bit because I have, I actually have that box over there. And during the holiday season, I make Christmas beards out of it. So there you <laughs> go. Uh, it's also good for stuffing up a leaky uh, rear back door, little little ma man pond. Mark knows about that. Yep. And as you can see here, some companies like Kendo Vape Cotton, that's something that we've all used. They have Gold Edition, Echo, uh, and uh, Standard Vape Cotton. Uh, also, you have your Standard Organic Cotton, and there's some of it is bleached and some of it is unbleached. Some asses are bleached, some are unbleached. So there is we go. Is it all cotton organic, though? Uh, and then... Mark, please don't interrupt me because you don't prepare for the show. I do. So we're just going to let prepared. me. You're not prepared. You're, you're, I, not, you're not. You see my desk. So this is cotton bacon version two. So that's sort of an overview. There's also uh, ceramic, which is something we've seen wick, wicks uh, with, with a coil built into it, which had its pros and its cons like everything else. But there you go. There's my little spiel. And I'm going to have some coffee. What time are we going live? I don't know, but I think that was a pretty good run through, right? Yeah, pretty good. Did you get tampons in there? Yeah. Oh yeah, tampons. I'm sorry. That's another wicking method. We used to use tampons. Yeah. You would think tampon cotton would be the safest cotton. It was super absorbent, according to the commercials. I use maxi pads. I actually slide oh. a I slide a maxi in a five millimeter coil. Brian, who was the guy? He vanished. Who was the dude that? Uh, Used to stalk us back when BK was around. Remember, he was he lived in Pennsylvania. What was his name? He lived in a, like a trailer home. Oh, 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 Stan. Stan, yeah. Whatever happened to Stan? Because he used to use tampons and shit like that. He, well. Yeah, well, dude. I mean, the guy fucking bathed in like a toilet water. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I love Stan. Stan, yeah. Yeah, I heard he went back to cigarettes. Yeah. I heard he did too. We're still here for you, Stan. So if you're out there, yep. uh, real quick before I forget, I'd like to give a, a shout out to Michael Lucente. Is it Lucente? Yes, my, Lucente. my man, my honky, Michael Lucente. Yeah, Michael, I'd like to wish you a full, speedy recovery. We got mad love for you, bro. So, um, Mark doesn't even know what we're talking about right now. Yes, I do. Do you? I'm full, fully aware of the situation. Okay, good. I'm glad you're on top of it. Um, yeah, so we have all this stuff. So w wicking is one of those things that if you're tired of spending money on coil heads, because a lot of us start with like enclosed systems or tanks that use pre-built coil heads, and you see a lot of people around you and they're vaping RDAs and RBAs and RTAs and RAAs and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And you might want to know, well, what's up with that? How do you do it? Or you might be intimidated. I can guarantee you that Mike, Mark, myself, and all of us that have experience with building started off not having experience of being intimidated by it. Wouldn't you agree, Mike? Totally agree. Totally. And you have to start somewhere. And the only way you learn is by doing. And you're going to have shitty wicking. And wicking is usually where the trouble starts. Yeah. Getting a coil to glow evenly, most people can pretty much do that. Yeah, you might burn your fingers. Yeah, you might you know, uh, have your coil hit the you know, the inside of your RDA and have it fucking cook on you. Um, but eventually you'll start getting the coils to glow. But the wicking part takes skill. It takes time, patience, and uh, help. So that's the why... Main, I... The main thing is do not be discouraged. If you mess up the first time, try again. You know, practice makes perfect. That's the way it is. I did a nail wicking in the beginning. I had is my issues. I kept on doing it over and over and over again until I figured it out. You know, that's what uh, a lot of people that are having issues need to do. They need to practice. Keep on doing it. Don't get discouraged. Also watch videos. Yeah. Um, try watch, different techniques also. Try different techniques. Watch build videos. And the good news is, is that your success will lie more in not how clean it looks necessarily, 
but really how how it vapes you know how effectively it wicks the juice how high you can bring the wattage up depending on the build that you use and there's just so much complexity we can't cover it all on one show but we're here tonight to mark's going to dive down he's going to show us a little a little wicking tutorial um, then we're going to talk about what cotton are, is our favorite, what we like to use individually. Uh, we're also going to talk about where to get it if you're interested in picking up some cotton. And uh, Josh just said, you figure out how to wick that reload RTA yet? Thank you, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> Josh was at a hangout the other night as I was wicking the reload RTA. And uh, yeah. Yeah, a majority of the time when you see people saying this atomizer leaks, it's... 80% of the time, it's your wicking. That's the problem. Yeah. You have too much, too little. You have it packed in there. You have it too loose. So you got to like perfect the wicking. Also, uh, I had somebody comment on the vape team today that the Icon RDA ha didn't have a good flavor. And like my fucking head exploded and my eyes went huge and I had to immediately respond. When it comes to like rebuildable atomizers, whatever you're using, if, if the majority of people are saying the flavor's banging and your flavor's not banging, chances are it's either the coil that you're using is improper for the for the RDA or RTA you're using, it's the diameter of the coil is not right, you didn't, you know, it's not spaced properly or it's not evenly glowing, it's not wicked properly, or position, height. Some RDAs, some RTAs will leak, some of them will whistle. So there's it could be the juice too. Could be the juice. It could be your mouth. Maybe you were sucking a bag of dicks the night before and you had like a pop shot all over your mouthpiece oh. and that's, that salt was just covering your tonsils and you just lost all taste. It's possible. Mark's had that happen. He told me. I've had juice taste like strawberry dicks before. <laughs> let's talk about our what kinds we use. Let's I've, seen do that. That. I've been seeing that a lot in the chat. Let's get, it, let's, let's get it out of the way. Go ahead, Mike. You can lead us off. Okay. I'll start off. I'll show you guys my cotton that I use. I like to get bags like this. Now, it's not the brand, it's not specific, it could be anything, but uh, basically just regular organic cotton pads. This is what I like to use, pads like this. There you go. And you go with the grain, I cut it, and I take off the two outside layers. I put it through my coil. This is what I like to use. But I did get a new cotton that, uh, I haven't tried it yet. I heard people talking about it. I've heard of it. This stuff here. Uh, Muji cotton pads. I got this off uh, Amazon. So, And I've heard a lot of people say good things about the Muji. You know, this would be the next stuff I'm going to try using. <laughs> you, can use That's that what I like. you can use that as a booster seat in a car. Yeah. <laughs> it's got some height to it. Yeah, but that's what I like to use. I like to use those. I have it... Uh, in my memory bank, I know where to cut it for the diameter coil that I'm using. You know, so I've gotten used to it doing it that way, and uh, it works, so there's no reason for me to change it. I mean, I do have other cotton, like cotton bacon. I have lots of Kendo cotton, but uh, I just, I don't know, I just like, even though they're good, they vape great, but I just like doing it using the pads. It's just, uh, I'm a, I'm a, how can I explain Creature it? Creature of habit. Creature of habit, thank you. That's the words I was looking for. So, yeah, Mark. I uh, I started off with using cotton balls from like the far, uh, the drugstore or whatever. Then I went to uh, Cogendo cotton pads, like the squares, and I would pull off the outer sheets. And then I got into the cotton bacon, and then I finally started using this uh, cotton candy collection. It's kind of like cotton bacon, except it's like one big long kind of piece I think what I like most about it is that it's kind of already like pre kind of fluffed and it comes in one of these little canisters and I've been using this stuff and just like Mike like I've been using this stuff for so long that I know exactly how much to cut how much to pull apart depending on the diameter of my atomizer yeah. And yeah. I, you know, I use bacon occasionally I've tried the the, the, go, uh, the Whatever. Kendo. Kendo. Kendo gold. But I just keep coming back to this stuff just because it's it's clean, it's easy to use, and I hate cotton that's in a bag. I just can't stand the fact that I gotta cram the shit back into a bag. So I feel I like, like I'm I feel like I'm eating like big league chew or something, you know what I mean? Yeah. 
Yeah, it feels like big league chew. Um, I, I was probably one of the last of us to sort of da- nail my wicking. It took me a little bit longer. I was stubborn, and I was trying to do it my own way for a long time. And uh, I think that whenever you start to develop your skill set based upon, like, whatever wick type you're using, and I like the pads too because I think that they're, like, consistent. Like, the thickness and everything is the same on every single pad. So I use these huge Japanese organic cotton pads, and they come in packs, and uh, they come pre-wrapped uh, and cleaned and everything in this little wrapper. And I just know exactly how much to peel off, how much, how thick it needs to be. But I would say when you're early on and you're not sure, like, like I didn't even know what diameter or coils I was using because I didn't have the right tools. So I think tools are really important for building also. Yeah. Um, also, scissors are super, super, super important. You want to make sure you use awesome, sharp, really good scissors to cut your, your wicks. And uh, Mike, why don't you show them your little tweezers that you like to use for uh, combing your wicks? Combing right your wicks. I think this right here is uh, something that's key to have in your arsenal. Uh, combing out your wicks, that's one thing too. Always comb them out. So this way there's no, the, your cotton isn't bunched up to where it'll stop the flow of the liquid. You want the liquid to be able to flow with the grain. You don't want... You don't want your grain to be like this and like that bunched up. So, so I like to comb it out. And then with this, you, it's nice to grab your cotton, put it in position. Whether they're using an RTA or an RDA, this is my favorite tool right here. I can't live without this. If I don't have this, I'm lost. I don't like taking like uh, where I see some people they'll use like their screwdriver and tuck it in. Meanwhile, that screwdriver has been everywhere. It's touched everything, dirty screws, everything. And you're touching your cotton with that. Where something like this, I always have it clean, and it only touches my cotton, these tweezers. You know? So that's, I think, key is that too. And another thing is also your hands. Always make sure your hands are clean when uh, messing with cotton. That's a key thing to where you're going to get also bad flavor. Because if, you if your hands are dirty and you touch that cotton, you put the juice, you're going to taste nastiness. And you're going to think, oh, I'm getting bad flavor from this. What's going on? Meanwhile, it's from your dirty hands. You're not touching the cotton. So I think those are some key tools to have. Like Brian said, uh, scissors. You know, I have a nice pair of scissors. I have my scissors. I know a lot of people always ask me. I haven't been using them. I got to sharpen them. But these are like professional hair cutting scissors. Right here. I got to get them sharpened. So something like that is nice or... I've been using these a lot. These actually cut pretty good. This is from, uh, if I'm not mistaken, they're from the Geek Vape, the new Geek Vape toolkit. Yes, they're pretty good. I like them. Right? This is the one. Yeah. I use these all the time. Awesome scissors right here. Yeah. From the Geek Vape toolkit. Uh, I also like to use the the ones that come in the Coil Master, the foldable ones. They're nice too. Those are pretty good too, the Coil Master ones. And then there's another tool. Uh, which uh, Mark actually was the one that brought our attention to it, which is pretty cool, is the new Coil Master brush. It's got uh, one side of it is uh, a coil rod like this. And then the other side is a brush. Now, with that, you could use the brush to brush your coils, like to clean them. But let's say you decide, I wouldn't use it. If you're using that to clean your coils, do not use it to comb out your cotton. You're going to either use it to comb out your cotton or brush your coils because you, know, you don't want to get the dirtiness that's left on that metal on your cotton. But that's another good tool to comb out your cotton too. You know, but I prefer the angled tweezers. Yeah, it's really, really important to brush your cotton. It's not just for looks or to make it look clean because, like Mike said, if your cotton's going all different ways, the liquid's not going to flow through the cotton. And you'll see it when you ch- when you take your cap off or you cl- go to check your R- RTA. You'll see like dark spots on your cotton where it got clumped up or it wasn't feeding it properly. Mm-hmm. And then you'll know that it was too tight. And that's why like the cotton bacon and the native wicks and a lot of those bag cottons, everything sort of just clumped in the bag. And it's a little bit more challenging. You can still straighten it out. You can still comb it and get it to flow nice. Mm-hmm. But it, j- it just doesn't seem to wick as good for me personally. But that's yeah, really I- important. I've seen some videos of just random people doing builds and their hands were so dirty when they were wicking up these atomizers. I'm like, holy shit, that atom- that build's going to taste like shit. Your hands are like black. It was nasty. 
Yeah, you definitely don't want to wipe from back to front, and you want to wash your hands and keep yeah. them clean. <laughs> I've noticed that too because there's times where I'll sit and do a build, put my liquid in. I actually put my cotton actually when I'm rewicking. Like for example, like if I'm rewicking uh, the engine, and um, I start vaping it, I'm like, what the fuck's that taste? Then I'm like, oh shit. I'm like this. My hands. I'm like, it's probably my fucking hands. I don't. I totally forgot to wash them. Wash my hands. Redo the bill. Redo the cotton again, and then it's fine. So your your fingers are dirty. Your hands are dirty, and you're going to touch that cotton. You're gonna. It's gonna be in your build. It's gonna be in your that flavor. It's gonna be shitty in your build. Yeah. If it's in your budget, it's always good to have a dedicated set of tools just for cotton, like scissors just for cotton. Yeah. The little brush or the tweezers just for the cottons. That way you don't mix them. You know, I get my scissors from like uh, either Hobby Lobby or something like that. If you go in the uh, in the knitting department, the cloth scissors. These seem to last really long. They don't dull out after a while. Nothing I hate more than using a pair of dull scissors to cut cotton. Yeah. You know, you got to sit there and keep going like this. It's so annoying. Yeah, use scissors specifically for one task and don't use them for, like, you know, cutting open your fucking chicken bag in the kitchen and then, yeah. you know, doing other things in your house with them. Have set tools, a clean surface, a clean work area, and, and wicking right. Taking the time to wick right will pay dividends in flavor and performance. There's also another thing we haven't mentioned, and that is the juice that you use. Different juices have different... Uh, flavorings in them different sweeteners in them and the, you know everyone always says well how do you know when to change your cotton how do you know when to clean your coils how do you know um you know how often do you do it now me me personally i don't care what kind of uh juice I, or what kind of uh wick i'm using or whatever i like to change my cotton like every two days because i love great flavor i love that fresh fucking build flavor you know when the coil's fresh yeah go ahead mike I I change mine like every three days, two or three days. Yep, same here. Yeah. The coil sometimes will last one, two months, but the cotton two, three days. Yeah, yeah. The coils will last. As long as you clean every like two or three days, you clean your RDA or RTA out with fresh cotton, clean the coils nice. Uh, coils will last you. Yep, months. Yeah. Mark, why don't you walk us through real quick a build, and then uh, also, do you have any RDAs that might be dirty and show them how to rewick? I have one right here that's kind of coiled up and ready to go. Let me uh, do -do, do -do, so I can rewick this. Um, well, it is. It's already kind of cleaned. I already pre-cleaned it, but. I don't know. There's, there's a bunch of different ways you can clean this. You can pulse it. You know, you don't want to glow it completely red, but you can pulse it. You can use one of these coil master brushes and then you could brush the coils or a really, another really good method is you could pulse the coils and then you could run the coils underwater and kind of steam clean them. Yeah. Them that's again. what I do. Me too. It comes out beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It does. The coils are red right when they turn red, put them right under the water. Yep. Yeah. The, the steam clean method is really good for coils like Alien and Clapton and stuff like that. But I don't, when it comes to when it comes to wicking, the, the method I find to be the best is when you get your cotton and it's all together like this. Or let's say you get a, well, we'll do this first. But if you get a piece like this, I know a lot of people kind of just pull off a piece and then they just wick it up. I find the best method is to pull it apart as much as possible like that and then roll it back up in your fingers and it just becomes much more absorbent. <laughs> it looks like, it looks like crap right now. It does. But when you go like – when you – this is going to pull in more liquid than if you were just to cut a piece off here and just feed it through. So it's much more – it's just fluffier. And then – Wet the tip. This is the part also where you need to have clean hands. Yes, yeah. most definitely. And then the problem I always have, finding the hole. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Get in the hole. I can't do this, can I? Oh, maybe, maybe. There we go. And then this is very important because if it's too tight and you got to pull on it, then you're going to have a net. You're going to taste cotton. If it's too loose, 
you're going to get, uh, it's going to sizzle up, pop. I mean, you got to get that, you got to find that medium, like where it's not too tight, it's not too loose. And this feels almost perfect. It just hugs it. Yeah. And then once you... Also, much... you want to be careful if it's too tight, you'll also distort the coil position and, and you know, you'll, you'll, you'll affect the, uh, the glow, the even glow of your build. And then you, once you get it cut, you can either use the brush to brush out the cotton because the ends are all kind of clumpy right now or you can use where are they there like mike was showing you guys the little needle tip tweezers and just pretty much brush it so why don't you tell everyone why you're brushing what you're building on right now what is that this thing? is the kennedy 25 rda and what's the st what's the stand and the sitting stand on? is from um Oh, my tenderfoot stands. Tenderfoot stands. There we go. So, what you want to do is just brush the ends out. You want to get the knots out. You want to just get it as fluffy as possible. And I'm trying to find. I had another. How do you know when your your cotton's combed enough and not too much? You cut. I mean, you just you look at it, and when it's nice and straight, and it just looks good. Like, let me see if I can get a little bit. Closer with every extra dry. You just see like the strands are all kind of straight as opposed to over here where it's kind of like knotted up. And then as you're running your tweezers through it, it'll focus, Daniel Sun. Um, it will stop pulling off cotton once it straightens. Like once you get all the knot knots out, it'll kind of just clear itself up. It's I don't know, it's just one of those things you just kind of know. Yeah. And then after you get done combing it and combing, I could probably brush it more, but, and then you can see all those strands are nice and straight. So that would be good to wick. And then I would just comb this side right here. Also, and, and knowing how long to keep your wicks on the sides, like uh, what your coil position, the height from the build deck, also what type of RDA or RTA you're using. There's so many different things that determine where to cut your wick to make sure it's long not too long or not too short so that it wicks properly yeah you always want your cotton to fold down and just touch the bottom if you start folding it like sideways and underneath and this and that it's better when the ends of the cotton are just touching the deck so that way it pulls in the juice on an rda on an rda yeah on an rda and Which then here's dripper. Here's that coil master brush. I love the brush. I just feel like it, it, it takes me too much time to sort of pull the cotton off the brush and I stab my fingertips. Yeah, it is it is a little bit slower as opposed to tweezers. But, but it does do a good job. It does. It really does. And yeah. then if you're using... That's like a full bush right there. I prefer the twe the tweezers instead. Yeah. Me personally. If you're into the, the pads, hmm. I don't know... Yeah, these these pads usually have these outer sheets, and most people like to remove the outer sheets. This is a I have never used this pad before. You see, like this outer sheet, they usually get rid of the. There's an outer sheet on two sides, but this I don't know what pad this is from. This is the Coil Master one, so it's a little different. And then they use the middle. It's a little bit more fluffy. It's a little easier to work with. Now you can. Uh, comb through the outer portion of the pad, but it's easier for me just to get rid of the outer the outers and just use the inners. Yeah, and then once again, before you cut it, pull it apart as much as possible, and then cut it, and then roll it back up. I think pulling it apart is very important. That's that, I think. Yeah. Cool. Dude, I'll sit here and whip this thing for like two hours. Baby, come back. Go back. So look, they're snipping the ends off. I would say that it's probably better when you're cutting your, your wick, uh, wicking material to to do a little bit extra instead of a little bit too little because you can never you can never add more but you can take it off so it's better to have a little bit full and when you go to pull it through if it's a little bit too much you can sort of peel some off and then put it through it's easier that way 
and also if you're unsure like when you put like any rda for example what mark was saying um cut only one side brush it out and then fold it in and see if it's long enough if it's not you could always pull a little more before you you cut the other side you know what i'm saying so this way just in case yeah like this side i cut it was perfect this right here is probably too much i want to want to cut this a little shorter yeah because when i get it down there it's going to be too much it's going to fold over also, another person in, in chat, I'm sort of reading chat as we're doing it, and, and wicking technique is controversial. It's sort of like sweeteners and e-liquid or mixing preferences, um, building coil preferences. Everyone has their own technique that they say works the best. Uh, some people say that you know they don't like to use the tweezers like that because it thins out the cotton too much. Uh, other people said they use something called the Scottish roll technique that I think Rip Trippers had a video on his channel about that, using the outer portion of the pads to reutilize it. I think the Scottish technique for me is good for like being able to really fucking have a ton of heat going through your coils without burning your wick. But as far as like wicking cap capability, I, I don't think it's as good as just using regular cotton and pulling it like Mark just did. But it's good yeah. for not dry burning your, your cotton. A good way to tell if you wicked it up good is if you're vaping on like an RDA or something and your your cotton gets dry, you got to redrip. If you look at your cotton and the cotton gets bone dry to where it's white, that usually means you did a good wicking job. Yeah. If there's still juice in there and you're getting dry hits, then chances are there's knots or somewhere in there. Yeah. yeah. That's a great point, Mark. I think this is the most organized and serious vape team episode we've ever had. This feels uncomfortable. Well, I'll show you guys right now. <laughs> We're like adults here. <laughs> Did you guys could see that? Yep. You can see it's white. Yep. That's like a perfect wicking job. No, so obviously this here needs needs juice. Needs the juice in there. I uh, need the juice. The juice. The juice. The juice. And when you when you do the whole brushing technique to your cotton and you drip liquid on the cotton, the, the drop should pull right into the cotton the minute it hits the cotton. If it sits on top of the cotton and just kind of sits there and then rolls off to the side, chances are the cotton's not brushed out enough. Well, this is another good test too. You can see now it's juiced. Look at the cotton. Now, when I dripped here, all I did was drip down the center. Yep, and it just sucked dump it, right up. I dumped it down the center, and you could see I did not drop any uh, liquid on top of the coils or on top of the cotton. And you could see it just sucks the juice right up. That's what you want. You're gone. <clears throat> as far as performance of uh, utilizing the proper wicking... What coils do you guys prefer in, uh, to use the most? I know I we had a, I know we had a build uh, two weeks ago where we talked about coil builds and stuff. But if you had to pick one that you enjoy in most RDAs, what would that be, Mike? Uh, Alien. Alien, my favorite. For me, it's gonna be uh, Fuse Clapton. Yeah, I like Fuse Clapton's. I like Aliens, Framed Aliens, uh, or Framed Alien. The, uh, I've been enjoying these a lot, Mike. The Coilology Framed Alien Staple. Yep, those right there, too, are good. These are Anything fucking that's awesome. Alien on there, like those, too, I, I just love them. Yeah. I've been using these coils and everything. These Geek Vape coils, I just love them. I know some people probably may not be a fan of them, but these, I think, are perfect. I like using those coils for single coil builds some reason yeah they're they're too much for dual builds for me yeah so, well th these newer like they have a few different ones these newer ones are not as hot and big the older ones they had they were smoking hot yeah, they were they too were, big oh, no, i have hey check these out we got the older batch of them or oh, i got these monsters here from them yeah, I got those two. These here, these there. Uh, I don't. I don't. These personally, I don't like using these on the coils. See, these are the older batch, and these ones were just hot as a motherfucker. You put these in a in an RDA. Yeah, I have a few. Like, 
of yeah. those packages. I know this is a whole nother show, but these yeah. quilt master ones are really hot too. Those right? are fucking hot as balls. Those are so <laughs> big. They are huge. Even those, I can't stand those foils. Yeah, yeah. I can't either. I'm gonna show I'm gonna show you guys something that uh well I know I don't know if Mark yeah, you. I think you use the Coilology ones, but I know yeah. Brian. I love the Coil out all all of them. These uh, staggered fused, Mike. I love. Uh -huh. I'm gonna show you what's coming out soon. I'm gonna have them on the website. Okay. Frame stapled, nice. Well, this is just one of them. Ah, oh, it comes in a spool. Nice. All right, and the spool, so you can make your own coils. How fucking cool is that? That's right. perfect. So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna have these soon. I think when we come back from Foxwoods. So they have them in rolls, uh, frame, staple, uh, Clapton, Clapton okay. wire, um, staple. Uh, what else here? We have uh, inter. Well, no, I'm sorry. Multi strands, fused Clapton. You can see that. Beautiful. And the last one is uh, Tricor Fuse Clapton. Are those like 15 feet, do you know, or 30 feet? These are all uh, 10 feet. 10 feet, of okay. Yep. Very cool. Yeah, so this is some new stuff uh, that uh, Coilology is doing in, in rolls. Dude, who would have thought we'd have spools of fucking complex fucking wire like that? That's amazing. Dude, this is, I mean, I like this. I love the idea of being able to roll it up now myself. Yep. Even I, I like the pre, I like getting them like this where they're just ready to go. But uh, you get if you get a certain one that you like and you know how many wraps you want to do to get that resistance that you want, I mean, it's right there. More, it's more economical to roll it yourself. It's not that hard. And, and I can totally vouch for the, for the coilology coils because, dude, those things, when you put your build in and you fire it up, all it takes is a little fucking brush on the coil, and they 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 they're just even, man. They're really really well done. Right, and the resistance is always right. What they mark it as, it's perfect. Right, right on the money all the time. Yep, they're awesome coils. I love them. I would say ninety five percent of the time, that's what I'm using in all my builds. Yeah. Or my builds. I love the coils. I mean, I have. This is like my own for a half. I got used Clapton. I have aliens. <laughs> that's all I'm, Dude. I don't, I don't build. I just use the... That's what I do, too. I love them. The only ones I wasn't a huge fan of is just because I don't like that type of coil, but the dragon skin ones. Yeah, I don't like the dragon skin ones. I just don't like that. I don't like that style of coil. Here's a... I want to show this real quick. Show I don't it. actually use these, but these are good for a certain certain type of person or maybe if you're on the go or something these uh these little cotton sticks mm -hmm. quick, quick, quick. these are pretty cool and they come in different uh different diameters this is the three millimeter right here and like i said not for everybody just for people who have a hard time wicking they have a little plastic little core over it and i don't think this is a three millimeter coil it's probably 2.5 um, it looks like a three to me oh yeah there you go yeah. So you just slide that through the plastic, pull it through, and then pull the plastic off, and bam, it's wicked. And all you got to do is just fluff out the edges. This is probably a good idea for somebody on the go or who has yeah, shaky hands or something. These are really cool. Yep. And it puts the perfect amount of cotton in there, so you know that way you're not going to have too much or too little. Perfect. Perfecto. Oh man! Yeah, we... Oh my God! It's ten fifty-five. Wow. Yeah. Uh, we have we have some huge giveaways to announce. Yeah. We have some huge giveaways to announce. Um, we have an announcement from uh, Nomads, right? Vaporized Nomads. We have the Vaporized Nomads giveaway that we have to announce from last week. That's one winner. And they're going to get an Icon RDA from bradsvapor.com. And they're going to get the Revo from Adam at Vaporized Nomads. So, yeah. If you another, don't win, yeah, go ahead, Mike. Another thing, uh, just so I don't forget, uh, Vaporized Nomads for that Revo, 
this device right here. If anybody is interested in getting one of these, these this is a 500, 500 right? Yep. Device. Uh, a special for everybody watching the vape team tonight. If anybody wanted to get that for 400 bucks, basically uh, coupon code hashtag TVT, the vape team, the initials TVT, uh, you get $100 off the Revo on vaporizenomads.com. So you get it for 400 bucks. Holy shit. So $100 off with that coupon code. Coupon code is good until tomorrow night, midnight. Awesome. Thanks, Adam. Sweet. Yep. Hashtag TVT. Yep. Hashtag TVT. You get $100 off. Beautiful. So, yeah, Icon RDA and the Revo. Mark, why don't you... Uh, why don't you bring up the randomizer and pick a winner? All right. By the way, you must be uh, anywhere in the world this giveaway is for. You. Yes. The, uh, what's going to happen is... Just uh, for this one. Yeah. The, the uh, Brad's is going to ship the icon to Adam. And Adam will ship it. That's if, it's, uh, if the winner is outside the United States. If it's inside the United States, then Brad will ship the icon and... Uh, Adam will ship the the Revo to the person. Yeah, I'll make that decision when whoever wins tonight. You need to be an adult, obviously, yeah. uh, of legal vaping age. And uh, <clears throat> if you win, contact me on the Vapor Chronicles on Facebook. Uh, you can private message me, and I want your name, your address, and your email address. And I also want a picture of your photo ID. And then I'll decide if you're from the U.S. or if you're not, and I'll send it to the right people, and we'll get the winning out to you. This is a huge one. This is the biggest giveaway we've ever had on the Vape Team, and uh, it's for you guys, the viewers, the people that support us, the people that love yep. us. So we thank you, and we thank uh, Vaporize Nomads and also Brad's Vapor. Yep, thank you. Let's pick a winner. I'm nervous. We're um, we're randomizing from last week's show, right? Yeah. Uh, they had to make a specific comment on last week's show, right? Yeah. To be entered in the giveaway. Let me let me uh, before you do randomizer, Mark. Let me just double check uh, what it was from last week. They had a comment. Uh, let's see. It was during the squonking episode, right? Um, I want my boss to be iconic. Okay, that has to be in their comment. I want I want my boss to be iconic. So whoever commented that, and their- also. They have to be a member of the vape team. They have to be a subscriber. Yes. So you got to subscribe to the vape team. So if you guys are watching and you commented last week and you haven't subscribed to the vape team, we're going to give you 30 seconds to subscribe right now before we pick the winner. Because if you're not subscribed, you're not going to have a chance to win. So there's a little subscribe button right below and you need to click it. So should I wait 30 seconds? I would wait 30 seconds, Bark. So let's let's hear a, another word from our Penguin sponsor. Thank you. Uh, what are we giving away tonight? Tonight we are giving away the brand new Aspire Exo. Is that what it's called? The new uh, tank from Aspire. So I'm tank. Let me check. Hold on. I have a picture That's, over here. Uh, Brad'sVapor.com. Yeah, from Brad'sVapor.com. Brad's actually going to send me one. Uh, it looks badass. This is a beautiful looking tank. It's a sub ohm tank. It's a, the Cleto Exo, I believe. Yeah. I'm almost positive that that's what it is. Alito. All right, Mark. See. I think we could do that randomizer now. Huh? All right. Let me drop the link in here. Ooh. Adam Miller said this is the best show he's ever seen. Seriously. Cool. Wow. Thank you, Adam Miller. Uh, remember, uh, um, uh, Mark, uh, Brian did a trailer last during the week, so don't click on that one by mistake. Oh, let me double check. Hold Make on. sure it's this. It's the squonking episode. The vape team. Oh, you're, you're, I was wondering why there's only 47 comments. I clicked on the trailer. Uh, I knew it. <laughs> See, right, Mike, well. Mike knows his shit. There we go. That makes more sense now. Like, why is there only 47 comments for a boss giveaway? I'm having heart palpitations. It's either from the coffee or my anxiety about wondering who's going to win this. Yeah. All right. I hope Mark reads the name right. I hope so too. Damn, 724 comments. Here we go. All right. The winner is. 
Oh man. All right. <laughs> Uh, Mika and Zach Blair. What was that comment? M I K K A capital N Z A C H and then B L A I R. Their comment was, "I want my boss to be iconic," and a lot of people would consider the Nardia the best, just harder to get than the Hadley, which is awesome. And there's all kinds of aftermarket caps. Hmm. So congratulations to Mika and Zach. I think it's Micah, actually, Micah? Mark. Yeah, Micah. Micah and Zach Blair. Congratulations. Awesome. Congrats. And they, oh, yeah, there we go. Brian, you look stumped. I am. I'm, think, I'm thinking about the comment for next week's show. Oh, okay. What did, yeah. <laughs> um, hmm. I wonder if he's in the chat. I don't know if you're if you're watching the show and you uh, won that there, beautiful uh, setup. Oh no! Oops, that, uh, that's actually finger banging fat chicks, Mike. Yes. Uh, what's the giveaway that we're doing for uh, next week's show? It's the, the Aspire Cleto Exo. There we go. <sighs> So what should they comment? Uh, oh, we have a rigged comment. Someone said it's rigged. It's rigged. We're not giving away a rigged this week. Sorry. <laughs> All right. So yeah, this is the. Uh, it's kind of hard to see this, but this is the Aspire. Uh, Cleto Exo from Bradsvapor.com. I love it. I love the blue. I think the blue's badass. It's a nice go. looking tank. But uh, Brad told me this is from his mouth that he said it's like the best flavor sublim tank he's ever tried, and he gets them all. So I'm excited to try that. But you can pick your color too. So if you win, make sure you look. I think there's five different colors, so you can you you know it's ladies' choice. You can pick what okay. you want. Um, Mike, why don't you pick the comment tonight? No, uh, no, I keep on seeing rigged in the chat. What was the person's name that I want to get? Micah? Micah, if you're watching, comment in the chat, please. Yeah. Here, I will. Why does everyone say everything's rigged all the time? Hold on. Oh, the saw losers, you know? I'll I think see. a lot of people joke around, too, because they know that it, it's, that we, you know. Yeah. All well, right. Here. For everyone, for anyone that cares, here, I'll zoom in a little bit. There we go. Uh, you guys are probably not even going to see No, you're not going to see it. We don't need to prove anything. Fuck yeah, that gonna... shit. We're honest motherfuckers, so whatever. Whatever, post whatever. It, post, it on, post that picture on the Vape Team Facebook group. There we go. I'll do that. I'll take a screenshot. There you go. Anybody that's been following us since episode one of the Vape Team, before Mark was even a guest, knows that we're legit, we're the real fucking deal, and we're honest, good community members. We love vaping, and we're in this for the, real re the right reasons, so... Fuck the haters. <laughs> I aspire dicks. <laughs> there you go. No. <laughs> okay. I, uh, okay. It should be I aspire for Brad's Clado. There you go. I aspire for Brad's Clado. There you go. Someone's going to fuck that up. I guarantee it. You're just thinking about yourself. <laughs> Man, this show is way too normal. It's like just. Oh, you, know, you wait a minute! You farted before. Yeah, you did. Yeah. You kind of fucked up the whole beginning, Mark. And uh, yeah, let's tell everybody what we're gonna be tomorrow. Yeah, Myself and Brian. So we're gonna have Mark digitally enhanced and brought to the show. So Mark's gonna be traveling just through the interwebs to the show. But we're gonna be at Foxwoods Hotel and Casino in beautiful Connecticut, and uh, yeah, Vape Northeast. Yes. And uh, it's going to be awesome. We're going to have the Hit That Juice booth where we're going to have Hit That Juice e-liquid. We're going to have Icon RDAs. No, no Icon RDAs. We're not going to have Icon RDAs, but you can vape mine and put your fucking, you know, whatever diseased lips you have. I'll let you put them right on there for me. For me. Um, Mike will not let you do that to his. Yeah. <laughs> um, and we're going to be hanging out with our wangs out. So come check it out. Phenom the Great, Mr. Matchy Matchy. Uh, Asian matchy matchy, Mr. Asian matchy matchy. I think he won that award one time. Now, Phenom is the one that's going to have icons. Phenom's right. going to have 10 icons, so he's going to give away to people. I thought he was Puerto Rican. 
No, he's Malaysian. Oh, okay. He's called the Malaysian sensation for a reason. <laughs> he's not even Malaysian. <laughs> So if you guys see, uh, if you go into the event and you see Phenom, make sure you all hug Phenom and then ask him, can I have my icon, please? That's what he's expecting people to ask him. <laughs> also, if anybody uh, wants to help your friends out, people that are in your groups or anything like that, share the show because I, I think that this did a really, really good job of teaching people the basics on how to wick. And I, I think it's really well done. I actually enjoyed watching it, being on it. So great work, fellas. Fellas. Yeah. Thank so it's you. gonna be uh, who else? Uh, ambitions, uh, ambitions vapor. He will be there also at the event. Uh, we're gonna see Daryl. Quest for Vape will be there. Fuck yeah, Ronnie Cash will be there. I want to meet Ronnie Cash. I'm like, that's gonna suck. Uh, Ronnie Cash will be there with all his high end mods. Ronnie. And there might be. I'm not gonna say anything, but there might actually be a boxing match at the event. Really? Yeah. Who? <laughs> oh. Like, it's a yeah, well, by the way, that fool is probably watching. That fool is going to get kicked out. It's already been planned out, so you could show up if you want, but you're getting thrown out of the event. There's rumors of a boxing match, I heard. I say bring it. I'll meet you in the parking lot, motherfucker. I don't, even know who it, I don't even know who you're talking about, but I'll meet him in the parking lot. Whatever. Yeah. Just stream it live so I get to watch it. Yeah, so uh, why don't we do this? I'm going to... I'm gonna slow. Th I'm gonna slow things down. No means no, Mark. Is there gonna be an after show? Uh, if you guys want to do it, I know me and Mike. Mike have a lot of getting ready to do. So if you do come to the after show, plan on uh, Mike and I be popping in in and out because we're gonna be packing and fudge packing and all kinds of packing. So yeah, check us out if you guys are on the East Coast. If not, you can hang out with Mark and Zoom because I'm sure that's what he'll be doing all weekend long. <laughs> So there you go. Much love, everybody. We will see you same vape time, same vape channel next Thursday night on the vape team. And if you like this show, we got a lot more because I'll tell you what, this new content, this new focus that we have, we're focused. We're fucking serious about ours. Speak right, Mark? Yourself. I'm not focused. No, you're not. All right. Good night, everybody. Good night, everyone. Ah. Ah. <laughs> I didn't end it, but I, I, oh, okay. I got it. Mark, take your clothes off before the after show. I'm hoping we get some nudity in the after show. It's been, been kind of dry and stale lately. You've been kind of dry and stale lately. I have. I got a new lube that works well. It's water-based. Mm. Water-based, even better. I use petroleum-based. Nice. Yeah. Anyway, much love, everybody. Good night. Bye -bye.